click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to the subject electromagnetic field theory we are with chapter number 8 magnetic forces materials and inductance the first term in the title that is magnetic forces we are dealing with the very first topic in this chapter we have seen force on a moving charge we know that in the presence of electric field if a certain charge is moving so that time we say work done that was the case in electrostatics now in the presence of magnetic field if a certain charge is having motion so that time the charge also experiences the force exerted because of the magnetic field if the charge is not moving it does not experience any kind of force hence that time the force is equal to zero so in this chapter up till now we are covered with the two topics force on a moving charge and force on a differential current element because current we say it is a flow of charge so from differential current element after taking the help of integration we have the formula to determine the force exerted on to the current elements in the presence of magnetic field now the topic is force and torque on to a closed circuit closed circuit is the thing which completes path of the current path of the current means flow of charges so it has initial position final position the path is going to be completed now the new term is added to this title force along with torque we know that torque is basically a force we can call the force in rotation or rotational force we can term to be the torque that we can get by the cross product of the positional vector where we are going to calculate that particular torque and the vector kind of force so let us see the topic force and torque on to the closed circuit so under this title we consider a vector force at certain field point p so the field point p i have to show with the help of certain coordinate system the very simple we take into consideration that is the rectangular one so let us imagine the three axes that are mutually perpendicular to each other in the right handed coordinate system we denote x y and z and that are intersecting into the origin here now we consider a field point p here and at this particular field point the applied force f bar will be like this this is f bar and this is point p now the distance of point p with respect to the origin where we are supposed to further talk about the torque so it is represented by the vector r so that is directed from the position of origin to the field point p so this is the situation given to us and the torque we can represent at the position of origin by t bar bar i show because it is also a directional which particular direction we have to take at the end you will be knowing that the positional vector has certain direction the force available at the point p is also having the direction and the torque we have to determine by using the cross product so cross product gives us the two possibilities that is the perpendicular direction to the plane in which the two are lying so which one to be selected upward or downward so that we have to do with the help of right hand thumb rule so just now as we have talked about the torque it is also called as moment of force it is also called as moment of force and for definition point of view we have the relations of this torque with the force given by the torque or moment of force at the origin is directly proportional to the magnitude of the force hence i can write t is directly proportional to f so in the direction at the field point p we have f bar and at the origin we want to calculate torque so t is directly proportional to f bar the magnitude relation we have shown further t is directly proportional to the distance of field point from the origin hence we can mention t directly proportional to r in the diagram we can see t bar is the torque at origin and the distance separating the origin position 
where we are calculating torque and the field point position P is represented by R bar. So it is also directly proportional to R. So the meaning is that if the distance of separation from field point and the origin increases, the torque increases. If the force exerted onto the field point increases, the torque also increases. Further, it has the relation that T is directly proportional to sine of the angle theta where theta is the smaller angle between the positional vector r and the vector force f bar. So directions of f bar and r we have. So this is direction of r, this is direction of f bar. So if we take the smaller angle theta between the r bar and f bar, so we can take the sine ratio of that particular one. So t is directly proportional to sine theta also. Hence, in general, by removing the constant of proportionality or what we get to be equal to unity actually, so T bar is R into F into sine theta as I have given bar because it is a rotational force and force is a vector quantity. This much is the magnitude that we have obtained from these three relations. We have to put the direction and direction is the normal direction. Hence, I put the suffix capital N to this unit vector A. So this is A N cap. So as torque, we have positional vector magnitude multiplied to the force along with the sine theta. So sine theta will not be having any uh, unit into the SI systems. It will be a constant one. Force will be in Newtons and R will be in terms of meters in SI system of units. Hence, I put the unit to the torque that is Newton meter. So this is the simplified formula we can talk about for the torque at a single point. Just now we are talking about a single field point P into the space. Further, we have to talk about the torque onto a closed circuit. Now the formula just now we have written T bar is equal to RF sin theta a n cap with the help of cross product representation we can make it more simple that T bar is given by R bar cross product with F bar in Newton meter. So this becomes a simplified formula for the torque at a field point P. Now if we have to generalize this for a closed circuit we take the case of two such field points. So let us say in the diagram that we had the three axes here, we take two field points. This was the Z axis, this was the X axis, this was the Y axis. Let the points P1 and P2 represents the two field points such that equal and opposite forces are applied at P1 and P2. Let us say this is F1 bar and as this is oppositely directed F2 I show in the reverse direction. They have same magnitude but reverse directions. Now the positional vectors for corresponding P1 and P2 positions we can show like this by joining the origin to P1 and P2. So this is our origin. So this becomes R2 bar and this becomes R1 bar. Now if we join the positions of the two field points, we can mention here another vector, let us say from point P2 to point P1, we can designate it R2 suffix 1 bar. So here the case we have taken F1 bar and F2 bar are having same magnitude but they are in the reverse direction. Hence, F1 bar is equal to minus F2 bar we have to write. Now, what is the total torque at the origin because of these two forces at the two different field points? So that time we have to add the two. Hence, the total torque we have to write T bar is equal to R1 bar cross of F1 bar plus R2 bar cross of F2 bar. This we are doing because of this simple relation. So this will be applicable at field point P1 as well as P2. So we add the two 
and try to obtain the torque. So here as F1 bar, F2 bar are reverse with equal magnitude, F2 is equal to minus F1 bar if I put, we obtain T bar is equal to R1 bar minus R2 bar in multiplication with F1 bar. Hence, I can write T bar is equal to R21 bar F1 bar. Hence, in the diagram, we have a line segment joining positions of field point P1 and P2 representing R21 bar and we have this relation. So, the origin if we take the position where we are going to calculate the torque, so that is independent of the positional vectors R1 bar and R2 bar, how far the field points are. So, anywhere we calculate the torque because of such a system, it will be same given by R21 bar cross of F1 bar. Now, from a segment joining the two field points, if we talk about a closed loop or in terms of circuit, you can say, so that time into the Cartesian coordinate system, I take only one plane here. So let us say this is Y axis and this to be the X axis. And in this plane, I show you the loop or the circuit by this diagram. Now this is x axis, this is y axis and here we have the closed loop and in which the current is flowing in this particular direction. Let us say this is segment number 1, this is segment number 2 from this corner to this corner, segment number 3 from this corner to this corner and segment number 4 from this corner to this end which completes the circuit. Now this loop is centered at the origin. You have to consider the symmetry of the diagram and the differentials along the x and y we can write this is dx in this direction and this is dy in this direction. Now origin we have at the origin what is the torque because of the complete circuit because the topic name is force and torque on a closed circuit. So this is the circuit. Now this circuit can be divided into four segments that we have shown. So because of the first segment we will first of all talk about what is the force and what is the torque at the origin. Now the force because of the differential current element we have seen and according to that particular topic the differential force let us say because of segment 1 we write d of suffix 1 bar it will be given by the cross product of the current element in differential with the magnetic flux. So here we consider the magnetic flux B bar and that is having the form into the Bx Ax cap By Ay cap plus Bz Az cap the resolved components into the XYZ axis. So it can be represented with the different color here. Now in this system, we have the current element on which the force is to be exerted and we have the magnetic field which is exerting the force. So this is the magnetic field which is exerting the force and this is the current element in the form of a closed circuit in the form of a closed loop which is being exerted by a torque or by a force you can say. So for the first segment df1 bar will be having ideal bar, ideal 1 bar cross of b bar which we can further find out by i dx in bracket by az cap minus bz az cap ay cap. So df1 bar is the force onto the line segment 1 that is a part of the closed circuit here. It is given by I dx by Az cap minus Bz Ay cap. Now we know the torque. The torque we have to determine. So let us say it is differential torque dt1 as the force is also differential. It will be given by R1 bar cross product with df1 bar. 
the df1 bar we have obtained by idl1 bar cross of b bar i dl1 bar cross of b bar what is equal to df1 bar so we take again the cross product with r1 bar so here r1 bar for the closed loop So the positional vector with respect to the origin that will be having minus dy by 2 ay cap in multiplication of cross with again this particular bracket that we can substitute here and after taking the cross product the dt1 bar will be minus i by upon 2 dx dy into ax cap. Similarly, we can find the differential forces onto the second segment, third segment, fourth segment and the corresponding differential torques. Hence, the df2 bar we can write it will be i dl2 bar cross of b bar that will be obtained as i dy in bracket it will be bz ax cap minus bx az cap and the dt2 and the differential torque for the segment 2 it will be given by r2 bar cross of df2 bar r2 bar we can write dx by 2 ax cap and obtain it i times bx 0 upon 2 dx dy ay cap so these are for the two line segments that are a part of closed circuit. For the third segment, we can write df3 bar obtained by i dl3 cross product with b bar. It will be equal to i dx bz ay cap minus by it will be az cap. And further dt3 bar will be obtained by R3 bar cross product with DF3 bar and it will be R3 will be dy by 2 ay cap and the finally we can have I by 0 upon 2 dx dy ax cap and the last segment that is the fourth segment which will complete our loop so for that purpose we can have DF4 bar obtained by I DL4 cross product with B and it will be I DY minus BZ AX cap plus BX AZ cap. The differential torque for the fourth segment DT4 bar we can write that is R4 bar cross product with and we obtain it capital I BX upon 2 it will be DX DY AY cap. So we have obtained DT1 bar, DT2 bar, DT3 bar and DT4 bar. So the total amount of torque at the origin because of the complete loop we can write it will be DT bar given by DT1 bar plus DT2 bar plus DT3 bar plus dt4 bar which we can write to the next step i dx dy in bracket bx ay cap minus by ax cap hence it will be i dx dy in bracket az cap cross of b bar so in short as the multiplication of two dimensions dx into dy will give us the surface area that is enclosed into the circuit hence dt bar will be equal to i ds bar cross product with b bar az cap is the direction normal to the loop here so in this diagram we have shown dx dy so dx into dy we get differential surface area inside this particular loop the perpendicular direction that will be either coming outward or inward. So here we are accommodating dx dy into az cap that is ds bar. So this is the expression we are getting for differential torque at the origin because of 
the closed circuit. Now in the expression we have obtained, we have the first vector to get cross product with B bar that is I ds bar. In another words, I ds bar can be mentioned as differential magnetic dipole moment. Okay, differential magnetic dipole moment and it is the product of current into the loop that is capital I and the vector surface area enclosed by the loop. Hence, we can denote the differential magnetic dipole moment by dm bar that is I ds bar and it is in terms of ampere meter square. Ampere for the current and meter square for the vector surface area that is enclosed into the loop. So, using the differential magnetic dipole moment, we can represent differential torque at the origin or at the center of the closed loop that is given by dm bar cross product with b bar. So, in the numerical statements, if you are provided the dipole moment or directly the i bar and the surface, so that way you can calculate the differential torque. In general, for a finite closed circuit, if it is enclosing the surface area S bar, so that time the torque in the presence of magnetic field B bar can be given by I S bar cross product with B bar or M bar cross product with B bar. It will be in terms of Newton meter. So this is also Newton meter. So these are the very important formulae. So this completes our topic that is force and torque onto a closed circuit. In the subsequent lecture, we are going to take three numericals based on to the calculation of force and torque because of certain closed circuits. You will be given the positions of the point which completes the path to be a closed circuit. For getting more information to the subject electromagnetic field theory, you can subscribe to EKIDA channel. Thank you.